Hey everybody, it's Brian with Retired at 40. I hope everyone's staying safe and healthy in, these, uh, in this crisis. And I'm hoping that the video today can kind of brighten your spirits a little bit. Uh, we're gonna make some bread and some pizza dough today. And it's a good time, it's, it's as good a time as any to be doing some baking right now because you should have lots of free time or you're at least holed up in your house. And when you take a bite out of this bread, when it first comes out of the oven, it'll definitely lift your spirits. <laughs> so we're gonna do the pizza dough first, and this pizza dough actually will make uh, two pizzas. So the first thing you need is a, a cup and two thirds of water. So this, this recipe actually says if you are going to use this right away, then just do one, uh, one teaspoon of yeast. If you're gonna let it rise, then do uh, two teaspoons. So I'm actually just gonna go right in the middle and I'm gonna do a teaspoon and a half. And we're just gonna take that and we're gonna mix up the yeast in the water until it's basically dissolved. So a good way to tell if your yeast is dead or alive, if it's alive and doing what it's supposed to be doing, you're gonna see a, little, a few little air bubbles here and there. And if you don't see any of that, then your yeast may not be alive. And we're just gonna keep mixing this until it's all kind of dissolved and you just have a kind of a cloudy looking water. Okay, so once this is nice and mixed in, we're gonna do a quarter of a cup of olive oil. And we're gonna give that a mix in there. Next, we're gonna do two teaspoons of salt. Okay, and then the last thing, we're gonna do five cups of flour. And I would recommend wheat flour. We use wheat flour and we love it for pizza. Um, otherwise, an unbleached white flour because I'm pretty sure the body doesn't require bleach last time I checked. Okay, so that's it for So I'm gonna put it in the machine because it will actually rise it for me. Um, if you're not using a machine, you're gonna wanna put this in a mixer or you can mix it by hand until you get that smooth consistency that you're looking for. This will take an hour and a half so after you've kneaded your dough for about five to seven minutes, you're gonna to wanna to divide it into about eight different sections and you're gonna to want to let those eight balls um, rise individually until they're about doubled in size. So before I start making the homemade bread, uh, take a minute to subscribe, uh, click the bell to get notifications of new videos that come out, give me a thumbs up, for the YouTube algorithm. It helps get this video out to people who enjoy this type of video. Don't forget to join that Facebook group. We're, uh, we're growing very quickly and it's, it's great. There's so many knowledgeable people on there. They're sharing recipes. They're sharing their tips. I think it's been really helpful for the members who have joined so far. So I'll put a link down below in the description. Uh, otherwise you can search it. It's Facebook groups slash retired at 40 live life simple. So for our bread, we're gonna use the same exact ingredients with the exception of a little bit of sugar. Um, we're gonna need two and a quarter cups of warm water. Make sure that it's warm. You don't want it hot though. And then you want two and a quarter teaspoons of yeast. And then we're just gonna put a, just a pinch of sugar in there. And we're gonna dissolve it just like we did with the pizza dough. We're just gonna keep mixing it until it's basically just a cloudy water. So once this is bubbled and foamy, we're gonna do a quarter of a cup of sugar. We're gonna do one tablespoon of salt and we're gonna do two tablespoons of oil. We'll give this a little mix before we add our four cups of flour. So the four cups of flour is actually just part of what our total flour is gonna be because we're gonna add it in just so we can get that right consistency which is one nice thing about doing it in the stand mixer or mixing it by hand as opposed to the machine because when it's in the machine you can't really see or get to, uh, to adding extra ingredients. Now we're just gonna mix this up until it's smooth. So after it's smooth we're gonna add flour in half a cup at a time until we get that right consistency where it's starting to stick to the sides. So you're probably gonna end up with about five and a half to six and a half cups of flour total. Okay, so this is five and a half, and we should start seeing some, uh, some different results here. Should really start clumping together. So that's six cups of flour, and you can see it's really starting to clump together now. It's pulling off all the stuff off the sides. So we're getting real close. I think I'm gonna add just a little bit more flour after I give us some time mixing. While we're letting that mix, I'm just gonna oil the pan real quick. All right, it's looking real, real good. 
You can see how it's, it's rebounding just a bit, but you don't want it to too much. So I think this is good to go. We're gonna put this, make this into a ball and we're gonna put it into the, the oiled pan. And then we're gonna flip it so everything gets covered in oil. You want the whole thing to be covered. And then I'm just gonna cover this up and we're gonna let it rise for about an hour and check on it. All right, so our time's up on our pizza dough. And you can see that it's risen quite a bit. We're gonna pull this out and get it weighed and then get it ready to freeze dry. This is not my finest dough that I've made for pizza, but it looks like it weighs two pounds, 10 ounces. So after we freeze dry it, we'll figure out how much moisture came out of it and then we can add that exact amount back in to get our same consistency. All right, so that's better. I just threw it back in the mixer and just add a little bit more flour. And that looks a whole lot better now. This will actually make two pizza crusts. So I'm gonna cut it in half and put it on our freeze dryer trays. And then I think in order for it to fit in the freeze dryer, we're probably gonna have to lay it kind of flat. So that'll get you two pies. And in the meantime, I'm gonna check on our bread. So the bread has about 13 minutes left to rise and you can see that it's already coming up above the pan so it's doing this job. It looks really good. Our bread is done rising up for an hour. Uh, we're gonna do the same thing that we did with the pizza dough. We're gonna cut it in half. We're gonna roll it, um, kind of like what you used to do when you were a kid with clay. And uh, we're gonna put them in two separate pans and we're gonna let them rise for another hour. So the bread's all done. It's risen for two hours total. It's looking really good. This recipe also will make two loaves of bread. And now we're gonna weigh it so we know how much water to put back in. So it looks like this one is one pound, 10 ounces. And the second one should ideally be right around the same. It's one pound, 12 ounces, so a little bit heavier. Obviously you're gonna have a little bit of a difference in between. I have a feeling this is gonna expand a little bit in the freeze dryer. And if it does, um, it's gonna make a big mess. So I wanna just at least this first time just to see what's gonna happen. Um, I wanna make sure that it's not gonna expand a bunch. Good morning, our pizza dough and our bread dough should be all nice and frozen by now. Let's go check it out. Oh yeah, we're good. I'm gonna go set the freeze dryer on pre-freeze and then half an hour we're gonna throw these in. All right, so Harvest Right was kind enough to send me the newest software, so I'm not sure. This is my first time I've used it. So it looks like you're prompted to see if it's a non-liquid or a liquid. Of course, ours is a non-liquid. And then pre-frozen is the same. Looks like 30 minutes is the same. I'll see you in 30 minutes. All right, let's get these babies in here. And you will notice that my freeze dryer is out in the garage again. Because since we're working from home, it's no secret that the freeze dryer is incredibly loud and I don't want to move this back down into the basement again because I'm moving in a few months couple months. So here it is, out in the garage again. All right, I'm gonna click start, close the drain valve. I'll see you guys in a while. Okay, so we're done. 46 hours and 18 minutes. Uh, that's a little bit skewed because I did add some time last night uh, so I could wake up this morning and it would be done. Uh, this screen is also a little bit different than the previous one. It gives you an option to warm the trays. Uh, I'm not sure exactly why you would want to do that. Leave me a comment if you've warmed the trays before and you know what uh, advantage it, it does. But let's get this stuff out of here. So here's our pizza dough. Here's our homemade bread. And really the first thing I want to do is just make sure that it's dry because this is pretty thick. And it doesn't look like it, it shrunk at all. Uh, maybe a little bit, I guess it did. but. This is totally dry in here. What's, what's nice too is since this consistency is happening that you can break these all apart and put them into a ball jar. Um, I, I really don't like using Mylar bags. You can vacuum seal 100% of the air out and you can also see what's going on inside. You can look at the contents while it's in there. So I'm gonna try something different this time. I'm gonna put this in the blender and almost get it back to like the ingredients that we started with. If you remember our bread before we put it in the freeze dryer was one pound 10 ounces and the other one was one pound 12 ounces. So now it is 
just about 15 ounces so it's dropped uh, 11 ounces about 11 ounces so that's how much water we're gonna need to put back in and next up we've got our pizza dough and that's 12 ounces that started off at one pound five ounces so for this one we're gonna need to add eight to nine ounces of water and we're just gonna keep adding some water until we hit nine ounces all right, let's let that chill and see what happens. I'm just gonna do both of these and I wanna see how much water actually equals eight to nine ounces. That's pretty interesting. The original recipe calls for a cup and two thirds of water, but that's for two pizza doughs. So that means it's pulling moisture out of somewhere else, the flour, the yeast, something. Uh, both of these pizzas are ready to go now. We're just gonna let them chill and see what it kind of gets us. Let's do the bread next. So here are our blended ingredients. They are 14 and a half ounces, and the other one was 15 ounces. So we need to put 11 ounces of water back into both of these. So same thing on the bread. Uh, originally we had two and a quarter cups, and now we're at a cup and three quarters just for one loaf. Here's our pizza dough with the kind of crumbled ingredients, I would say. And it's, it's taking in moisture well. It is going to take a while before this totally rehydrates, it looks like, but it, you know, it is starting to get that dough consistency, and the thing that I'm liking, that I'm seeing, is it's, it's, uh, it's sticking together, so that's a good thing. So for our powdered bread, it looks like it's really, really watery, but I think it's just because there's so many dry ingredients that haven't soaked anything up. This is obviously going to soak up the water a lot faster because it's in a powder form. Well, these have all been sitting for a couple hours now and it's not looking real promising. Um, I have higher hopes for the bread or for the pizza dough than the bread dough. And mainly because the pizza dough can still be rolled out and it can be cooked that way. Um, the bread dough that was powdered, I actually, I think I'm gonna try and put it back in this KitchenAid mixer and see if I can uh, whip it back into shape. So surprisingly, it's actually going back into shape now we just need to see if the yeast survived the freeze-dry process. Well, I have a little bit more faith now. It, uh, it actually did really well. It kind of perked back up again after I put it in here. Um, I oiled a pan. I'm going to see if it will rise. If it doesn't, we're going to stick it in the oven anyway and see how this turns out. So the chunked dough, it, it is coming back slowly, but I can definitely tell you already, and that's going to be the case for the, the pizza dough as well, that if you powder it before, that's going to be your best bet because it's going to give you that nice smooth consistency again. This has been back in the mixer for about 10 minutes and you can see that it's still got just little chunks of stuff which shows you the advantage of powdering everything. So I put my bread dough back into the oven to let it rise to see if it would rise a little bit. It's been in for about half an hour. I think it did actually rise just a little bit which would be good because that means that the yeast is still active. I'm going to give this one more whip in here and then we're going to try it in the oven. So to finish out this recipe, you're going to go to 375 on your oven. All right, we're all ready. This is going to go in for 30 to 35 minutes is what our recipe says. Crossing my fingers. It's time to check our bread. It's been in for 35 minutes. And unfortunately, it didn't really turn out bre very bread-like. So let's see what the inside of this looks like. So it did kind of turn out bread-like. It just didn't rise. It's just real dense bread. It still tastes good. But it tastes like if you've ever forgotten to put the yeast in bread and then tried to bake it. So because it's so dense, it's just very doughy. Alright, so I'm going to get this pizza rolled out next. And you want a lot of flour on your countertop so it doesn't stick. You also want to put it on the rolling pin. So once you've got your dough rolled out, uh, you're going to put a little bit of crust on it. You need to transfer it from the counter onto a flat baking sheet. And that's where all of your flour uh, comes in because otherwise the crust is going to want to stick to each other. If there's plenty of flour on it, it won't do that. So we're going to take this 
flat, we're gonna just cover this with olive oil or some kind of oil because this side actually goes down on the grill or the oven. So you're gonna wanna put your grill or your oven to 375. This has been on for about five to seven minutes. You, uh, you can flip it and to make it easier, you're gonna wanna oil this underside. So it'll slide off real nice and easy. Helps if you have a giant spatula like this. We're gonna let this one sit on here for a couple more minutes just to crisp it up, then we'll take it inside and throw our ingredients on. Mm. Well, I don't know if it's gonna taste good, but it sure looks good. Let's see if we can get this off here on one, in one piece. So there's our finished product. As you can see, it's a very thin crust, and I think that that's pretty much the only way that you can do it. Let's try a little taste test, see how it turned out. So it's not quite as crispy as it normally would be, because I think that yeast just changes the consistency of the dough just enough that it, it, it's only gonna work if it's thin crust. It tastes just fine. It's, I would call it like a 75% success. Um, the dough is not quite like it should be. So, we've learned a couple things today. I think in order to make the bread turn out, I think the only way that you can do it is get that starter going. So basically that entire recipe without the yeast, and then after it's freeze dried, obviously it will ha not have any water in it. So you add the water and the yeast after it's freeze dried. I'm not sure if the yeast can actually survive the freeze drying process, so, so I'm gonna try and freeze dry the yeast and I'll put the update on the Facebook page. Um, the other thing that we've learned is pizza is somewhat doable, but I think the pizza would turn out just fine if you did the same thing, if you added the yeast and the water back in at the same time. Anyway, so we had some moderate success, some moderate failure today, but um, if anyone else has had any successes or failures with uh, pizza dough or bread dough, let us know in the comments section. In the meantime, this is Retired at 40. Remember to live life simple, and we will catch you next week.